Welcome to the Law Challenge 2019. And this is the meeting edition of this educative, liberating, and empowering projects. Welcome once again. And welcome to our contestants from the CAF University College and University of Ghana. A round of applause for our contestants. <laughs> and as always, I'm your host, Samson Ladi Anyanini. The only favor I can do you is that I read out questions for you. But before we start, can you introduce yourself to us? Mark Andrew Kwate, level 300 student, Kaf University College. I'm Eunice Osei Darkon, level 300 student of Kaf University College. I'm Daniel Saki, level 300, Kaf University College. Right, University of Ghana represented by? Kwekwa Prekwe Japan, University of Ghana. Christine Selikam Lassi, University of Ghana. I like that. Louder. Setdu, University of Ghana. Setdu, University of Ghana. A round of applause for <laughs> our contestants. <laughs> round one. In this round, it is all round questions and civic education. And you are expected to know something. You, as a team, will have five major questions. And for these five questions, you have 30 seconds to deliver your answer to a question. If you answer correctly, you gain 10 marks for the correct answer. If you are unable to answer correctly, then the question will be passed on to the next team. The next team, if it's successful at answering that question within 15 seconds, will attract five marks for that question. Let's begin with the Carth University College. And here is your question, and listen very carefully. A newly trained teacher, after receiving his back pay, which had accumulated for one year, went to a drinking bar and drank above his limits. He proposed to the lady bar attendant, who rejected his proposal. He subjected her to serious beatings, which landed her in a hospital with a broken jaw. The teacher was charged on two counts of assault and causing harm. He pleaded not guilty to the charges. His defense was twofold. One, that he was provoked by the lady when she insulted him after rejecting his proposal. And two, that he was drunk and did not know what he was doing. Will his plea succeed, Calf University College? Yes, Dan Saki. It will not work. No. Uh, it, he will not. He will. He will not be liable for the offense that uh, offenses that he has been charged with, and his. Excuse me, please. He is liable, and his defense will not lie because, as because. Insults alone do not constitute provocation. He cannot plead the um, partial defense of provocation because insults alone, it should be present with battery and um, battery. But then, and also the second 
the defense too will not lie because just intoxication, drunk um, intoxication, please, they will lie because it's, it's also a partial defense. And he can say that he was not in the right in his right frame of mind okay. when he did that to Thank his... Thank you very much. You had already been bailed mm. out and you will be deserving of half of the mass. Because, because, because of your first emphatic answer of no. Since they have not exhausted the full answer, you have the opportunity to finish it up. Um, for the purpose of intoxication, um, the defense will not lie by virtue of the fact that he was intoxicated by virtue because he was drunk, and he was drunk because he drank like he drank the alcohol. He was self-induced, so he cannot rely on something he himself caused by, and then use that as a defense against the charge. Thank you very much, and I think that you are deserving of the um, bonus mark as well. Yes, of the half of the half of the mark as well. So to your substantive question, University of Ghana, the CEO of a company invited his, his lady secretary to his office for some discussion. When the lady was leaving the office after the discussions, the CEO fondled her breasts and followed it with a part on her buttocks. The lady showed some displeasure to what her boss did. And as if to cool her, he told her, quote, you are in fact beautifully lo beautiful and loaded, unquote. When the lady closed and left the office, she reported her boss to the police for harassing her. Did the boss commit any offense by those acts? And if yes, what offense did he commit? University of Ghana, time is running out on you. Okay, in this case, it would be sexual harassment under the Labor Act, but then we could also look at indecent assault under Act 29. Thank you very much. That is a correct answer. <laughs> Once you know that we are in the terrain and the domain of criminal law, you stick to crime. So the offense of indecent assault, and you're fine. Yes. But you're right. The Labor Act is also applicable. But we are talking about the offense to be charged for a crime. All right, so let's now go to the Calf University College for your question. What is unnatural canal knowledge under the Criminal Offenses Act 1960, Act 29, define. Which of you is taking the question? So with natural, Andrew, yes. yes. With natural carnal knowledge, we know it's um, between the sex organs, but a natural carnal knowledge comes in when the party uses another passage other than the sex organs. For instance, the anus, thanks. Okay. So your answer simply is sexual intercourse, not using what is known to you as the natural organs. I'll pass on for a bonus. So the Act defines a natural canal knowledge as canal knowledge that is unnatural. So now the question is then what is it? So um, the explanation of it is basically um, the penile penetration of an orifice on the body other than the vagina. And natural canal knowledge as defined by the Act. So, Cath University College, whilst your answer is not exact, exactly accurate as you find in the definition of Act 29, I will grant you half of the mark. <laughs> and once your answer is almost a repetition of what they had to give, I'll deny you an opportunity of enjoying any parts of that mark. So to your substantive question, University of Ghana, Article 280, Clause 2 
of the 1992 Constitution provides, where a Commission of Enquiry makes an adverse finding against any person, the report of the Commission of Enquiry shall, for the purposes of this Constitution, be deemed to be a judgment of the High Court, and accordingly, an appeal shall lie as of right from the finding of the Commission to the Court of Appeal. End quote. A. Sue the Attorney General in the High Court claiming that a statement contained in the report of a commission of inquiry appointed by the president to investigate corruption in the public service was damaging to his reputation. So same must be expunged from the report. He sought a further relief of damages for defamation. The attorney general raised an objection in limine against the jurisdiction of the high court. Will the attorney general succeed? University of Ghana. The, yes. att the Attorney General will succeed by virtue of the fact that um, the findings of a commission of inquiry are considered or are deemed to be the judgment of a high court. Specifically, the constitution provides that um, after six months or when the government issues a white paper to that effect, and the case in point is um, the Rukubu Bay, Ghana's 50 um, cases per mile for sale. So if, the, if A, Sues in the high court, it is tantamount to reopening a case which is more or less res judicata by virtue of the fact that the commission or the findings already stated constitute a judgment and you cannot sue in the same court regarding the same subject matter. Um, yes, in the same court. That's comprehensive and correct. <laughs> but as a student of the law, you're always reminded to look for the specific nomenclature because the High Court lacks jurisdiction. You are entitled to the full marks. The answer is a natural carnal knowledge, a sexual intercourse with an animal in an unnatural manner. Cass University College, here is your question now. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? What is the difference between rape and defilement. Please, rape. rape, according to section yes, 98, Eunice. is Eunice. Yes, possibly answer. having intercourse with another Eunice, person. Start your answer. Rape, according to section 98, is possibly having sexual intercourse with another person without their consent. And the age limit is 18. The person who is 18 and above. And defilement is the age limit is 16 and below, please. Um, 16 and below with defilement, having sexual intercourse with another per person of the age 16 and below. So, said the rape is the age is 16 and above. I give you the opportunity to recast your answer. Recast the answer. Yes, your answer again is. Your answer again is quick. The difference is the age limit. Rape is 18 and above. Please proceed. Rape is 18 and above. And defilement is um, below 16 and below. Sir, so, it seems we are confusing ourselves. But let's finalize this. <laughs> yes. Um, if we are saying below uh, 16 okay. and below and okay. 18 the what of 17 so rape is 16 and above and if you have sexual intercourse with a person below the age of 16 years you have come whether whether with or without his cons her consent you have committed defilement thank you very much that is an answer worthy of the full marks that's an answer worthy of the full marks once again as students of the law let's be mindful of the nomenclature, the names, the words that we use, the vocabulary. Rape is carnal, having carnal knowledge of a female not less than 16 years without consent. While defilement is having natural or unnatural carnal knowledge of a child less than 16 years of age, with or without consent. So collectively, you have it correct, except that where you needed to give the stresses 
it was when I asked for a repeat that you seem to have been providing the answers on that. I will not be this generous the next time. University of Ghana, how many kinds of assaults do we have in our criminal law and what are they? There are two, assaults with battery and assaults without battery or plain assaults. Thank you very much, but that should earn you eight marks. <clears throat> what do you find missing that you can fill in and get the two marks? <clears throat> so, um, it's assault with battery and battery. I'm sorry, he spoke about assault and battery. It's the same thing you have said. Assault and battery and assault without battery should earn you eight points of the marks. A complete answer would be assault and battery, assault without battery, and imprisonment. To your question, Kath University College, and please listen carefully. A highway robber armed with an AK-47 assault rifle signaled the driver of a passenger bus to stop, but the driver refused and sped on. He fired at the driver, but missed his target. The bullet went through the window of the bus and hit a farmer who was then working on his farm by the roadside. A search party from a village nearby managed to arrest the robber with the weapon. He was put on trial for the murder of the farmer. His defense was that his intention was to rob the passengers on the bus, but not to kill the farmer. The jury should find the robber guilty or not guilty. Guilty or not guilty, and why? Guilty. Guilty, and why? Guilty because according to the principle of transferred intention, Though he meant the, the, though he meant the arm, um, the person that he stopped and it didn't stop, but then the action fell on the farmer. So the actor's rules on the farmer will be transferred onto, um, his intention will be transferred onto the actor's rules committed on the farmer. And that is transferred intention. Thank Section you very much. Five. And you are deserving of the full marks. You should be found guilty. Because if a man deliberately shoots at another and misses him, but kills another differently, it is murder. It is immaterial whether his intention was not to kill the farmer, but the driver of the bus. Thank you once again. A round of applause for Karth University <laughs> College. <clears throat> University of Ghana, Apia, not Kwekua Praku. Who performs night security duties in the house of a bank manager? Planned with his friends, Mensa and Kosivi, to rob the manager. They agreed to meet at 9 p.m. for the operation, but without any gun, so that they did not attract any attention. On the appointed time, Apia had a second thought and decided not to take part in the robbery. He feigned illness <clears throat> and told his master he would not report for duty that night. At 12 midnight on the planned date, Mensa and Kosivi successfully undertook the robbery operation and stole many valuable belongings of the couple. To the surprise of Kosivi, Mensa carried a pistol along and shot at the manager without any resistance. The manager later died on admission to the hospital. Is Apia culpable in the crimes committed? If yes, what possible charges could he face? He'll be 
He will be liable to con- he will be liable to be f- for conspiracy to commit robbery. Why? The elements of conspiracy are one, an agreement to commit an offence, the pl- plurality of minds, and then common to act for a common criminal purpose. Comprehensive. And all I asked for was what charge he would face. And you were absolutely right. Conspiracy to commit robbery. All the full marks, University of Ghana. Let us now turn to CAF University College for your very final question in this first round. Listen carefully. Who made this comment? Quote, judicial power as contradistinguished from the power of the law has no existence. Courts are the mere instruments of the law and can will nothing. And quotes. Who is speaking? Yes, Eunice. Daniel Saki? Salah Denny. Not correct. Yes, for a bonus, University of Ghana. John Locke? Incorrect. Chief Justice Marshall. You wrote it? Yes. Okay, so now to your very final question. And when you write, let no one dissuade you. Here's a question, University of Ghana. State one article in the 1992 Constitution, which deals with the supremacy of the Constitution or makes the Constitution the supreme law of Ghana? Article 2, specifically Clause 1 of Article 2. Article 1, sorry. That the Constitution of, the, is the, of Ghana is the supreme law of the land, and any other law found to be inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution shall be to the extent of that, that inconsistency be void. Thank you very much. And it's deserving of the full marks. So I discovered the confusion. As you said, Article 2, Clause 1. You wanted to say Article 1, Clause 2. So Article 1 indeed. And this will be the end of Round 1. And at the end of round one, for University of Ghana, 53 points. And CAF University College, 30 points. The second round is the buzzer round. We are dealing with criminal law, contract, tort, company, the Ghana legal system. You have six questions per team, and you have 30 seconds to answer a question. If your answer to the question is correct, you get 10 marks, but if you get it wrongly, you get five marks deducted. If a team presses the buzzer before the question is over, I'll allow you to proceed to answer the question. When a team presses the buzzer but fails to answer the question correctly, the other team will have the opportunity to press the buzzer to answer the question within five seconds. So shall we go? I am an equitable defense to avoid a contract where the relationship between the contracting parties is such that one party, being the dominant party, will presumably, or in fact, have taken advantage of his dominant position. Position. Um, I got Scarf University pressing the buzzer first. So Daniel Saki, what's the answer? Recession. Incorrect. I make a contract voidable, not void, ab initio. When I am established, the plaintiff may repudiate the contract once or soon after I cease to operate on him or her. Who am I? Undue influence. That is correct. I am actionable per se. Listen to me. I am actionable per se. I am said to have been committed 
when there is the deten detention of a person and the detention is unlawful. University of Ghana, you rank first. False imprisonment. False imprisonment, and that is correct. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is a third situation calling for your identification. I am a strict liability tort, which makes a person liable for the thoughts committed by another person. For me to occur or be committed, Cass University College. Vicarious liability. That is correct. <laughs> I must say that is remarkable because I was almost not complete with even the first you know, sentence of this whole paragraph. So we shall move on to the next, which will be the fourth. I have my origin in the thoughts of nuisance. I came about as a result of the Industrial Revolution, which is dated to the 18th century. Britain, prior to the Industrial Revolution, was a largely agrarian economy, which circumstances changed with advances in technology. Cat University. Eunice. Repeat your, repeat your answer. Eunice. <laughs> Nuisance. That is incorrect. So, I continue with advances in technology as factories and industrial plants sprang up. These factories or industrial plants, by their activities, occasionally cause damage to neighboring lands in the form of fires, floods, and escapes of fumes. I was therefore created as a thought to deal with the situation in an attempt to make industrialists strictly li liable for their actions which occasion damage regardless of whether or not they could have taken precautions to prevent same damage. Who am I? Relanton Fletcher. That is correct. <laughs> I belong to the branch of law amongst neighbors. I provide remedies which have at their core the protection of the environment as actions deal with elements of pollution such as noxious fumes. Cars University, environmental Daniel Saki. Law. Environmental law. Daniel Saki, I am sorry. So I'll continue. Elements of pollution, such as noxious fumes, waste, of, waste or sewage, offensive smells, and noise. Today, I am generally classified under public, private, or statutory law. A claimant who comes under me must prove that there is an indirect interference with the enjoyment of a land that this interference has caused damage to the claimant and that the interference was unreasonable. Who am I? Yes, said though. Nuisance. Nuisance. That is correct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now to your very final description calling for your quick detection and Answer, I am described as a statement which injures the reputation of another by exposing him to hatred. Calf University? Yes, Eunice? Defamation. Defamation. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, on that very excellent note, 
we end round two. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. You welcome back. The Lord Challenge. Yes. And we must say congratulations once again to Kath University College and University of Ghana. You have done very well. A round of applause for them, please. At the end of the second round, here are the results. University of Ghana, 40 marks. Kath University College, five marks. So rounds one and two put together, we get for University of Ghana, 93, and for Kath University, 35. A round of applause for all of them. So ladies and gentlemen, get ready for this third round. And this is where we deal with profound quotes and identification. You will be giving a quotation, in fact, three quotations each, and you are simply required to tell us the people that these quotations are attributed to and or the cases in which you find these quotations. Each team will be giving 20 seconds to answer the question. If you answer correctly, you get 15 marks. Each team will be giving an opportunity to identify one personality within the law fraternity. And this is a non-transferable round. So if you are ready, let's begin with the University of Ghana. It must be borne in mind that specific performance is an equitable relief. It is exceptional in its character and a court has the discretion either to grant it or to refuse it. One such principle is that a plaintiff who seeks specific performance of a contract must show that he is ready and willing to perform his own obligation under the contract. And any failure on his part or breach of his own obligation is a bar to his claim for specific performance. What is the name of the judge who made the above statements? And in which case? Um, the case of Lati and Banaman. I'm sorry. It was Ajoy, JSC, and Hansen versus IBM Enterprise Limited. To Calf University College, here is your quotation. Citizenship is a man's basic right, for it is nothing less than the right to have rights. This statement was made by, and in which case? You've been bailed out, I'm sorry. This statement is attributed to Hefron Benjamin in Shalabi versus Attorney 
General. University of Ghana, here is your quotation. Equality before the law requires equal treatment of those similarly placed, implying different treatment in respect of those with different characteristics. In which case was this statement first made? Just the case. Nati and Gati, that's about JSC. That is correct. It is the turn of the university, Calf University College, and here is your quotation. The president is the fount of honor. The constitution seeks to maintain that all dignity and majesty that surrounds the office and insulate it as far as possible from the hundrum of legal proceedings. This statement was made in which case? Yes, Eunice? In the case of Rollins versus Attorney General. Unfortunate? MPP versus Rollins. Unfortunate? MPP versus um, Attorney Kofo. MPP versus Attorney General. No. <laughs> Asari versus. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is also not in Asari versus Attorney General. It's not in Amidu. The answer to that question is the famous Salah versus Attorney General. University of Ghana, here is your final quotation. Today, the parents' responsibility is no more simple question of the upkeep of a child and supervising his work in the farm. It also involves the active improvement in a child's condition. Perhaps the time has come to put aside sheer and stubborn conservatism. Who made this statement and in which case? In we answer them. I'm sorry. Sakodia Ado in Abrebrese versus Carr. <laughs> Carf University. This is your very final quotation. I tell you who made the statement, but in which case was it made? Lord Denning said, in the exercise of their functions, judges must not be timorous souls, but be bold spirits. In which case did Lord Denning make the statement? Okay, they didn't hear the answer. It's not transferable, but you're itching to say, tell me who or in which case this profound statement was made. Yes, Christine? Lord Dennant's dissenting opinion in Candler and Crane Christmas. Exactly. Candler and Crane. <laughs> Christmas and Co. Now, ladies and gentlemen, still on this third round. You will identify the image on the screen by telling me who it's, whose it is. University of Ghana. Justice Yawapau. I'm sorry. Um, even though I saw it, bring it back again. That's, that's not Yawapau. Justice Bafuboni of the Supreme Court of Ghana. Now to Kath University College. Whose image is this? Justice N.S. Badibi. I'm sorry? William Atuguba Atugu JSC. Oh, 
that's unfortunate. But this judge is also a judge who's been brought to us through our televisions in a very important occasion in this country. So even if you don't visit the Court of Appeal, I expect you to have known him. Who is that? Justice. Justice Jamefe. Justice Senor Jamefe of the Court of Appeal. <laughs> Unfortunately, once again, non-transferable. <laughs> so, no marks for that. That is where we end the third round. Challenge 2019, and this is the meeting edition. The Law Challenge. At the end of the third round, University of Ghana got 15 points. And Cart University, because they were unable to attempt any of their questions correctly, got nothing. So from one, round one, two, three, University of Ghana, 108, and Karts University College, 35. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the very final round, and Karts University College, I must announce to you that this round can make all the difference, because I have seen it before. <laughs> In round four, each one of you is supposed to nominate a leader who will take 10 questions from me within 120 seconds. You tell me whether the statement I make is true or false. And you get five marks for each correct answer. Because you have 120 seconds, if you skipped, you will take the opportunity to complete what you skip if your time is not exhausted by the time I get to your 10th question. Are we clear? <laughs> Calf University College Faculty of Law. Who is representing you? Mark Andrew. Yeah. Your time starts now. The buyer's fundamental obligation is to pay the price in exchange for the delivery true. of goods. True. true or false? True. Yes, that is true. Property in goods always passes to the buyer after the seller delivers the goods to the buyer. True or false? True, true. No, it is false. Unless otherwise agreed, stipulations as to the time of payment or as to the time for accepting delivery are not conditions of a contract of sale. True or false? It's false. It's true. Goods which consist of unidentified parts of a larger bulk of goods will constitute unascertained goods. True or false? True. That's true. The provisions of the Sale of Goods Act, 1962, Act 137, will apply to a contract for dinner at a restaurant. True or false? False. false. True. Goods are the seller's risk 
goods are at the seller's risk until the property in, the, in them passes to the buyer, true, after which true, the goods true. are at the risk of the buyer. True. true, that is true. A buyer may reject goods which he or she has accepted if the buyer discovered defects in the goods after his or her acceptance. True or false? True, true. That is true. A lease is an interest in land which is created to last for a temporary period, usually for a consideration. True or true, false? True. That is true. One of the characteristics of a lease is that it may commence earlier than the day the instrument was created. True, true, true or false? True. That is true. If a covenant is breached, it will result in the automatic forfeiture of the lease. True or false? True. That is true. Thank you very much, Mark Andrews of the Cart University College, and a round of applause for the gentleman. Now to the University of Ghana. Who will be your leader? Okay. Kweku Apreku. Kweku Apreku in Japan. So, University of Ghana, led by Kweku Apreku in Japan. Your time starts now. It is a criminal offense for a landlord to lease a property within three years after an order of recovery had been made by a court of competent jurisdiction without the court's permission. True or false? True. False. The Wills Act 1971, Act 360, came into effect on the 1st of June 1971. True or false? False. True. Before the coming into force of the Wills Act, 1971, Act 360, the laws of Wills in Ghana was governed by the Wills Act, 1873, of England. True or false? True. False. The Wills Act, 19, 1837, of England. Under Section 7 of the Wills Act, 1971, Act 360, a will takes effect from the date of the death of the testator. True or false? False. True. A testator may appoint not more than two executors in a will. True or false? According to the Interstate Succession Law, PNDC Law 111, where the interstate is survived by a spouse or child or both, the spouse or child or both of them shall be entitled absolutely to the household shuttle of the intestate. True or false? True. That is true. Traditional councils can hear and determine chieftaincy matters within their areas in which the Asantehene or a paramount chief is a party. True or false? False. False. The golden rule is, is also known as the rule in gray and person case. True or false? True. True. Customary law does not draw a distinction between libel and slander. True or false? True. True. So that was another brilliant performance. A round of applause for Kweku Aprako in Japan. And that brings us to the end of the fourth round. Welcome back to the Law Challenge 2019, and this is the maiden edition. The Law Challenge. You guys speaking. And at the end of the fourth round, University of Ghana, 25. <laughs> CAF University, 35. As I said, it's the round that can make all the difference. It sure did make some difference. So from rounds one through to four, University of Ghana has a cumulative 
133 points. And Cath University College has a cumulative 7 0, 70 points. Please, a round of applause again for the ladies and gentlemen from the law faculties of the Cath University College and the University of Ghana. University of Ghana managed nine questions within their 120 seconds. Thank you once again very much and for staying uh, tuned to the Law Challenge. The Law Challenge is brought to you by the kind of sponsorship of Alisa Hotels, Media General, EPP Books Services, Discover the World of Books, Busy, Great Things Happening, Agate Enterprise and Transport Services, Official Transport Provider, Goel, Good Energy, Logistics Movers, We Help You Relocate, Notes, Everpure, Always Everpure, Everpure Refreshing, and Websites Technology, The Web Guys. So ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the preliminary stage of the contest, in the contest between University of Ghana and Cath University, University of Ghana emerged the winners with 133 points. Good to see you, all the best, hope to see you again, right. Hope to see you again in the next round. Yes, Christine. Right. Silicon. Right.